So the very first time I was on television was back in 2002 when I was 18. The topic was Queen Elizabeth. You see, my country, Canada, is one of 15 where Queen Elizabeth is the head of state. And I don't like having Queen Elizabeth as head of state of Canada, so they had me on to debate this other guy who thinks having Queen Elizabeth as head of state of Canada is really great. It is very painful for me to watch this video today because I look and sound so horrible, but let's just take a quick glimpse. It's just irrelevant to today's society. Ah, uh, that's enough. Anyway, let's talk about this whole crazy head of state situation in more detail. So, back in the day, there was this thing called the British Empire, and it controlled half the world. Some of the empire's colonies were full of white immigrants from Britain, and after a while, the people in the white colonies wanted to have their own government and run their own affairs. But Britain said no. And then America staged a revolution and left the empire, and Britain said, let's talk. After many years of negotiation, in 1931, Britain's six white colonies, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Africa, Newfoundland, and Ireland came up with an arrangement to become completely politically independent while still retaining one important link to Great Britain. The idea was that even after these countries became independent, the British monarch would still be at the top of their political pyramid. The British monarch would hold the office of head of state, or most symbolically important political person. But get this, the monarch would also treat each country as its own little separate kingdom. When Elizabeth II was made Queen of Great Britain in 1952, this arrangement was made very explicit. After she was named Queen of England, she was also named Queen of Canada, and Queen of Australia, and Queen of New Zealand, and Queen of South Africa. Newfoundland had by this time joined Canada, and Ireland had opted out altogether. So the British thought that this was a very cool setup, because it allowed them to pretend like they still had an empire without all of the hassle of actually running one. Because of course the British royal family had no actual power by this time. And when Britain made its other colonies independent in the 50s and 60s and 70s, it made those newly independent countries follow this whole system too. Pretty soon Queen Elizabeth was Queen of Ghana, and Queen of Nigeria, and Queen of Jamaica, and Queen of Fiji, and all these other exciting places. The British thought this was awesome! Their queen was still queen of half the world, and they didn't even have to do anything. Unfortunately, a lot of the countries themselves did not like this. They thought, hey, I thought we were supposed to be independent of Britain, so why is this British lady still running around claiming to be our queen? Over the course of the next 35 years, 15 of these former British colonies changed their constitutions to strip Elizabeth II of her title as their queen. Today there are only 15 countries left that still recognize the British queen as being their queen. Or in other words, as being their head of state. Eight of them are in the Caribbean. Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Three are in the South Pacific. Tuvalu, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands. And three are left over from the original clique that started it all. Australia, New Zealand, and good old Canada. Oh yeah, and Belize in Latin America. Now you are probably thinking, aha, I know exactly what that weirdo with the mustache is talking about. He is talking about the Commonwealth. Well, you are wrong. For you see, the Commonwealth is just this generic make the world better non-governmental organization that some former British colonies belong to, but some non-former British colonies belong to as well. Members of the Commonwealth have all sorts of different political systems and only a tiny minority do the whole recognize the British Queen as their Queen thing. It is true that Queen Elizabeth is the honorary chairperson of the Commonwealth, but this is like being the honorary chairperson of NATO or something, who cares? Countries that recognize the British Queen as their queen were originally called dominions, but then that term fell out of favor, so now they are usually called commonwealth realms. Which is sort of a confusing name because, as I said, not all members of the commonwealth are commonwealth realms. And to this day, we in the surviving commonwealth realms are still having a debate as to whether or not it is appropriate for an independent country to have the British Queen as head of state. Here in Canada, they even put twerpy weirdos on TV to talk about it. What do you think? Does this seem normal to you? Let me know in the comments. Perhaps you'll make a point that I haven't heard in the 15 long years I have been talking about this. Hey guys, this is JJ. Just a quick message at the end here, noting that I now have a Patreon page, so if you've been enjoying my YouTube videos over the years, uh, feel free to chip in.